Sing Cho, at your service, my liege. I humbly trust that even one such as I, a mere bookworm, may yet prove to be of some utility under your wise leadership. Nice. I don't often get a chance to speak with such formality. It felt pretty good. It was on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. <sighs> now, this is what I call a moment of solitude. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Wow. Huh? All will be revealed in the next volume? Oh, drat. If my calculations are correct, Wanwen Bookhouse is due to receive a batch of new releases today. Might we add a small detour to our adventure? My family makes ornate umbrellas that block neither rain nor shine. Their sole purpose is for decoration upon a wall. Good. The rain has stopped. Any longer, my books would have gotten wet. Only when it snows like this would I prefer to be at home than in a bookstore. For there is a well-stocked fireplace at home, while there is no fire allowed in bookstores. Great weather for practicing martial arts, but perfect weather for reading. Hey, what's that ridiculous look for? You look as if you're trying to decipher some strange text written on my forehead. Morning. The morn hours are precious. Spend them on that which matters to you. I am uninclined to eat a heavy meal this luncheon, but instead indulge in some baked treats. As long as I eat in the study, my father and brother never have to know. Oh, you want to join me? Well, as long as you don't get crumbs on the books, I suppose it's fine. What say you we snatch a few fireflies and read in the light they give? <laughs> hey, I'm joking. Seriously, don't. It's bad for your eyesight. You will find me in the same place as ever tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Unless you manage to get lost on the way. I always have to put on an act around other people, because they see me as only the second son of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. It's a relief that I can just be myself around you. I think it's because you don't see me in the same way. I would say we are book buddies. Huh? Combat? Guhua clan? Comrades in arms? What on earth are you talking about? I told you that's our little secret. We should become sworn siblings. Let's go to the altar at Jeryung Karst. Nope, no ifs, no buts. You know too much about me. You know the real me, the one I normally have to hide. I simply can't let you go until you promise me you will go through with it. There aren't many records on matters concerning visions, but I do have a passage dedicated to the topic in my collection of ancient texts. I can lend it to you if you want. I've come to an epiphany based on some things I've been reading. Ultimately, the arts of both the polearm and the sword are just the art of hand-eye coordination. Ugh, it's a little difficult to explain. If you want to know more, come with me to Wangshan Hall. But first, you have to promise me you won't laugh. Must see places in Liyue? That's a tough question. Hmm. The place I would miss the most if it disappeared would be the Wanwen Bookhouse, first and foremost. The Guhua sect would be in the top ten, too. I used to like rabbits, but I'm more a fan of stags now. To me, the saying, may my final stand be a monument to chivalry, is about abandoning worldly possessions and reaching enlightenment. But the stag's final resting place represents the hope for life anew. Oh, how I'd love to see it again. I have great respect for Lady Beto. I just wish she wouldn't call me kid and ruffle my hair each time she sees me. In her capacity as the Tianxuan, I'm obliged to respect her. Otherwise, it could create issues for my father and brother. On a personal level, let me think. I think I will go with no comment. I shan't speak ill of others. Ah, dear Chong Yun. Though he understands me quite well, one has to exercise caution when teaming up with him to go on a quest. He is making good progress in the martial arts, but I would say he hasn't quite internalized the chivalric code yet. He needs more practice. <laughs> Especially at eating spicy food. When Yunjin drinks a beverage she is fond of, she will be inspired to write a new play. So, I keep a jar of tea leaves under my bed at all times, ready to deliver to her on the day that her inspiration dries up. This way, 
I shall never run out of heroic tales to listen to. Ah, yes. The young lady who is now the master of the Wang Shen funeral parlor. If you're asking what I think about her as a person, well, there are all sorts of rumors about the way she works. But I think if you really want to understand someone, you need to find out what they are really after. I've always thought there is more to Chi Chi than meets the eye. But it's impossible to have a conversation with her when Baiju's around. Hmm. We could wait till Baiju makes a home call to one of his other patients and corner her. When you first spot Xiangling out and about, the first thing you should do is check the look on her face. Especially when she's just coming back from collecting new ingredients. The more excited she looks, the more dangerous it is to approach. Because if she sees you, she'll force you to taste test her latest concoction. I usually get Chong Yun to handle these situations. <laughs> Where does Xin Yan perform? Anywhere from Chuho Rock to Yujing Terrace. No spot is untouched by her disruptive presence. A quiet day when I can curl up with the good book is a rare treasure indeed. I've thought of all the illustrations I want for each major event in the next three volumes. I should write my thoughts down before I forget them, and send them to Mr. Koi de Prince. My father and brother entertained that gentleman as a guest once. From the way they were acting, he must be a very high-profile figure indeed. I also heard that he directs funerals for the Adepti, so he must surely have great depth to his character. We should do some digging and see what we can find out about him. I find that Miss Shenhe seems to look at me somewhat fiercely, so I daren't approach her lightly. Bizarre. Did I inadvertently upset her? Or maybe upset someone close to her? Have you heard the expression, same person, different face? Miss Yelan gives me precisely this feeling. When she came to visit my family, my father and brother treated her with respect, and she was pleasant and polite in return. She seemed like a kind and mature young lady to me, but when I saw her elsewhere, she gave a completely different impression. Ga Ming's work has all the trappings of a chivalric hero. Picture the scene. On a dark and moonless night, a lone young figure clad in black stands fearless on a secluded country road. They say his mastery of the martial arts is unparalleled, and the mythical beast by his side always does his bidding. Bandits and brigands beware, for none who challenge him come away unscathed. When he has the time, I'd love to hear more about his experiences as a guard. You should come along too. Are you keeping well, my liege? If you have no other matters to attend to, might I recommend a trip to the Wangwen Bookhouse? You ask why I enjoy reading in solitude? Studiousness can hardly be considered a bad habit. There's not much more to it than that, really. Your schedule is free today? Wonderful. I am ready to leave whenever you are. My book? Oh, never mind that. I can always pick up where I left off when I get back. But those in distress who need our assistance cannot afford to wait. You feel inspired, you say? You want to write a martial arts detective novel based on our adventures together? And you want to call it The Chronicles of Wanwen? <laughs> it's a good idea, it really is. But I'll have to decline. I'm sorry. Yes, really. A weaver of verses who draws from an ocean of expression. That's the reputation I aspire to. But you're the only person I can share that with. I am actually writing a novel, but I can't let you see it. Not yet. The time will come, though. You'll be able to read it when it's on sale in bookstores all over Liyue. Evidently, my hobby is reading. I'll read anything and everything. What's that mischievous grin for? Oh, that's between the two of us, okay? It's not appropriate to discuss it out loud. There's no point in bringing it up anyway. What annoys me? Hmm. Well, one day my brother will inherit the family business. What will happen to me then? I fear my current carefree existence would... Oh, no, no, no. It's not about my status or anything like that. I don't care for that kind of thing. I think my brother is something of a simpleton, and I would probably end up having to do most of his job for him. I like baked goods and U.S.-style seafood, probably because I'm used to quite a bland diet at home. I hate carrots. When I was young, my mother would mash them up into... 
Ugh, I can't go on. Just thinking about it makes me feel sick. Mm, I need only sample this delight but once for its aroma to remain forever in my memory. With cooking skills as good as yours, it'd be a waste not to open a restaurant. Wouldn't you agree? I couldn't possibly. But please, you eat your fill. I insist. Ahem. <clears throat> May this day of your birth be filled with much mirth. According to historical records, Tiancheng's stone bridge was formed by a fallen rock spirit thrown by the Geo Archon Morax in battle. If you walk along the bridge on your birthday and throw some more into the sea from both sides, you will be blessed in the coming year. Your birthday only comes once a year, so be quick about it if you want to go. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it's true. Go try it and you'll see. Were it not for my capability, the cause that so inspires me would remain confined to the pages that extol its virtues. Had I no moral compass, my efforts would have been misguided. Doomed to grasp at shadows while missing the substance, I would have become a Philistine that seeks only violence. There is a cause that I seek to champion, yet few in Liyue share my aspiration. This I have known for a long time, for it is a path I have walked for many years. I am most grateful for your company on my journey. I am proud of my achievements, both in the martial arts and in championing the cause so dear to my heart. Uh, I guess there's no need to euphemize any longer. Chivalry. That is the cause that inspires me and that I seek to champion. Why should I shy away from it? I am sure my father and brother are under no illusion as to what I stand for by now. But of course, I still need to be somewhat discreet in the way I go about my business.